Hi once again. Welcome to episode 802, 802 that is. And the topic today is, this is a warning. Dan, dan, dan. Um, <laughs> speaking about some of the primary side effects you may experience once you practice self-love. Um, this is gonna be a little bit of promotion actually and, and explain it because I was writing about this early today. So before I jump into that and all what it's all about, let me introduce myself so you know who I am and what I'm doing, why I do these talks every day. Um, my name is Barry Selby. I am the um, I'm the author of the international best-selling book. I put the right way around because I'm not an international bestseller myself. My book is um, called Fifty Ways to Love Your Lover: A Book for Singles and Couples, for Men and Women to Help You Have Better Relationships, whether you're in one or want to get one. Uh, I'm also a an inspirational speaker. At least I attempt to be some of the time. <laughs> and I'm also a relationship and love expert, helping women create balance in love, life, and business. And I've done the that, shh, Mr. Peace. I <laughs> excuse me. It's just a strange day today. I am um, a passionate champion for the divine feminine, which informs my work with women when I coach them, and also what inspired these talks over two years ago called "Messages from the Masculine Inspiring Your Feminine Heart." So today, after all these broadcasts, we're up to episode number eight hundred and two, and the topic today is about the side effects you may experience. Kind of like the medical disclaimers on TV ads. This is kind of like a humorous and positive spin on that for the focus of self-love makes sense i hope and the reason why i'm talking about this is because i just wrote a bunch of them on the i revamped the page for my self-love practice which i'll put the link at the end so you can check it out yourself but i explained in there sort of a list a short list of kind of the different things that you might experience when you do have when you practice self-love because most people look at self-love and go yeah right whatever so let me explain this a bit more detail because you might realize this would be a good thing to do. As I wrote in my revamped copy, so I'm, I'm going from memory, I don't have it in front of me because that would be scripted, and I don't script my face of lives, by the way. Um, I talk about how self-love is one of these things that a lot of people think of as being some sort of egotistical self, um, um, what's the word looking for, embellishing practice that isn't that um, altruistic or healthy. And I and my focus when I talk about self love, it's there's nothing like that. It's totally different instead because self love is not a head based practice. You know, egotism, mass, uh, and uh, machoism, and um, self inflated ego stuff is not what self love is about. Yes, there are people out there who claim to love themselves because of how dramatic their life is and how much stuff they've got in their lives, but it re that really is not heart centered. When I talk about self-love, I'm speaking primarily from the place of where your heart lives down here, not your head up here, because they're very different. <laughs> so I'll make that very clear. So self-love is a practice that is about bringing you into your heart and reflecting about who you are as a real person, not about what you possess, not about your possessions, uh, same thing, sorry. Um, not about who you are connected to, the famous people you hang out with, none of that stuff. It's about who you really are as a person. And everyone, frankly, deserves to love themselves. I, I'm, I'm adamant about that and persistent as well, by the way, in case you see my talks. So some of the side effects that you might experience when practicing self-love include some of the following possibilities. First of all, you might start, might start respecting yourself more than you have in the past. Oh my God, respecting yourself? What a concept. Yeah, you might start respecting yourself like more than you did in the past. Hi Sue, nice to see you in the broadcast. Um, thanks for being with me. Um, another side effect you might experience for practicing self-love is you might, taking you might start taking better care of yourself. What a concept that might be. Maybe you're not necessarily exercising as much as you want or sitting still and meditating as much as you want or eating healthier, well, the different things. Those are, frankly, some people do that from the front end because they want to make sure they take care of themselves. But if they do it from self-love, it's more, in, it's more um, easy to incorporate and it's also a more healthy place to source from because you don't, make it a discipline as much as you make it as a pleasure, kind of, sort of. So let me get that point. So that's, that's two. Um, another side effect you might experience from practicing self-love is you find yourself being more confident in who you are. Meaning not so much you're gonna go out and conquer the world, but basically you start taking care of yourself from the point of view that you don't need somebody else to make you feel okay. You're actually confident in who you are and respect who you are. That's, another, that's the first one again, yes. So you find yourself in this place where life is okay and you take care of yourself and you respect yourself. Another side effect you might experience from practicing self-love, I'll keep doing the introduction for this, 
if you actually find yourself, because you do have great self-respect and self-confidence, that you have healthier boundaries. You don't keep saying yes to things you don't believe in. You actually keep better agreements with yourself because you find yourself trusting yourself more so you can actually keep agreements that you make and make less agreements you don't have to keep. Yeah, that makes sense. So that's, that was number four, I think, four or five. Anyway, I'm going to keep going because I'm going to lose count, I think. We'll see what happens. So another side effect that you may experience from practicing self-love is that you don't need somebody else to be around all the time. In fact, you might find yourself enjoying being single for the first time in your life on a whole new level than you never did before. Because by having the practice of self-love, there is no um, emptiness that's yearning for somebody else to make you feel okay. I'm going to go there. Yeah, of course I am. Another, another part of this, which is a PS to that piece about what you might experience when you practice self-love, this side effect is you might finally break the pattern of codependency. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I have to do that one because it's dramatic for me. Codependency is one of these insidious, 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 and right away around the pronunciation, habit of many people because basically most of us on the planet have been trained to be codependent because of our parental upbringing and because almost every single movie, TV show and, and um, love song over the last 70 years has been codependently, codependency based. I was talking to somebody about this on Sunday, Saturday. Saturday, yeah, at the party, at the beach party, which if you saw my broadcast then by the lifeguard hut with a hat on, my, you know, my short broadcast, that was a topic that came up a lot in conversation about codependency, is that as my friend said to me, as I've said so many times, she reflected back to me, this whole frame of like, you complete me, is a, an, an archetypal, um, simplistic statement of what codependency is about. So when you say you complete me, it's the understanding that you're not complete, or I should say it's the false belief that you're not complete, so you need somebody else to complete you. That for me is the epitome of what codependency is about. And when you learn how to really take care of yourself and you love yourself, that's no longer an issue. I should say it's no longer a temptation, maybe is a better way of putting it. And codependency, frankly, is the undergirding of my work in the sense that it's this one thing that I'm focused on um, eradicating one person at a time. <laughs> so I've got a long mission ahead. <laughs> it can be busy for a while at least. So, so self-love as a practice, as I mentioned, so another, what did I say it was? Another, side, another possible side effect of practicing self-love, that's the right way of saying it, is that when you've committed when you committed to loving yourself and you no longer have this sense of codependency, the quality of choice in relationships you actually have in your life goes up dramatically. Now that includes social and friend relationships, not just romantic relationships. You see the thing is when you start learning that self love is a vital and and fundamental part of your life, you won't settle for sloppy seconds of love from somebody else. Meaning the quality of relationship you'll invite and your, and your choose will be at a higher bar than you may have done in the past. So one of the side effects is your dating life's going to improve. Oh my God, what a concept. <laughs> um, let me see, that was, I know, that's probably five or six by now. So let me see what else I can come up, what I can download in this place. So another possible side effect of practicing self-love, or another, another something like that. So I'm, I, I'm muddling up the title now, is that you will find yourself living in a much more happy and joyful place in your life. For some people, being in a place of depression or sadness is oftentimes comes from a place because they don't feel any love in their lives. And they may never have thought about the fact that they can actually self-generate their own love first. Because a lot of people, again, are ex externally referenced, their codependency trap. They're externally referenced, so their feelings of self-esteem and self-support and just joy are, are diminished and they feel depressed because they don't feel love around them. When, if you're dealing with this, just suggestion, if you practice loving yourself and you learn how to do that, and I have, again, I'll put a link in the back end of the comment, in the back end of the comment, sorry, I'll put a link in the comments at the back end of the broadcast once I sign off, I'll try to say that in English. That's an area that will change. Being less depressed, being less down, being less gloomy, being less um, frustrated because self-love eradicates those or at least diminishes those so you won't feel them as much. So there's another one that's night number seven, six, seven, somewhere around there. So um, what's another one I can suggest right now? So another possible side effect of practicing self-love 
I, and I wrote a bunch down that are on my on the page, which you can read when when you sign off. Um, what else is there? There's a few of these out there. I'm just thinking what would be. I mentioned um, self confidence, but I also talked about in a sidebar about agreement keeping. See, the thing is, when you are when you do respect yourself, appreciate yourself, support yourself, all these other things I'm talking about, you tend to make the quality of your agreements much more robust. And also that you'll tend to trust those agreements you make because you know you're taking them seriously. Which also means that you'll say no to a lot of things that you may have said yes to in the past. Because again, part of that trap of codependency is wanting to keep going out in the world to do things, to have things happen, to feel some sense of fulfillment. But it's all externally referenced. That's fun to do, but I, I recommend highly that you learn to bring the, the um, resource internal first. So when you are in a place where you, you appreciate yourself first and you trust who you are, you say no to things more easily so you don't have to keep going out and doing things trying to find that elusive sense of fulfillment that isn't actually out there, it's internal. So another one, a second one to that one, is that when you, one of the side effects of practicing self-love is you tend to discover an immediate sense of fulfillment in being yourself. Because you look in the mirror and you say, I like that person. And frankly, fulfillment for other people is, is missing because they don't know how to like themselves. So the self-love practice is fundamentally pivotal to shift you to a place where you actually trust yourself and you become fulfilled in who you are. And that's actually another one that brings another one. So another side effect <laughs> of practicing self-love is that you have more ability to function in the world from a holistic and fulfilled place. So what you do in the world has more impact, more gravitas, more benefit to those around you. It's a powerful place to be. And I want to throw in there because it's something I did, I actually, but I did it backwards. So this is possibly a backwards one, so let me see if this lands. So another side effect of practicing the self-love that you may experience is a desire to serve more in the world, a desire to make a difference in the world, a desire to contribute to the world. That's not done from some ego-driven place of wanting to be recognized, seen, or notified. You do it because you're driven to serve from your love, from your self-love and self-practice. So that's a powerful side effect that actually changes the people around you and the world around you. A potent place to be. So that's number nine, eight. I've <laughs> I'll go back and count, maybe figure out how many I've got up. I've got I must, must be getting close to double digits now. So let me put another one on the table. So another side effect you may experience when you practice self love. Let me see what else is up. I'm sort of making space for it to show up because these do drop in uh, show up. They show up or drop in one either one, whichever way it is. Um, let me see what else is, is in there for this. Um, ch -ch -ch -ch. So another side effect is, well, I'm going to say it this way, but there's, there's more to it, is you find yourself having more vitality. And now I talked about health earlier, about how you take better care of yourself in terms of what you eat, what you exercise, sort of stuff like that. Those are kind of automatic side effects when you love yourself. You start to appreciate the body you're in and what to do with it. But the second part of that, or another part of that, is you start to find yourself having more vitality, meaning you have more energy to do things that are beneficial to you and other people. This ties in, also ties into the other ones about having a sense of gloominess or depression. So people who suffer from that, well, they suffer. People who deal with that on a daily basis tend to have less vitality, less less life force, less joy to celebrate and be in the world. When you have these positive, because they are positive, obviously, side effects that you might experience when you practice self-love is you have more vitality, more joy, more, more um, <laughs> ebullience, that's a good word, ebullience, ebul ebul yeah, ebullience, being ebullient, that is the right way, yeah. use the knee, look it up if you don't know what that means, um, but it's the sense of being joyful and expressive and being more available to the life of the world. Another, yes, yes, there's another one, <laughs> another possible side effects you may experience when you practice self-love is you'll notice a lot more love around you. It's tempting sometimes to go through a life going, there's nobody out there loving me, I don't feel loved, I don't feel supported, don't really care. The reality is what's going on is you're blocking it out because you're not loving yourself first. When you do, in fact, turn on the tap, so to speak, to love yourself, then you notice that the resonance of that love is, is around you all the time. You can see it very clearly or you should experience it, feel it more clearly. Powerful place to be. Because when you recognize the love is everywhere, you might discover yet another side effect <laughs> that you may experience from practicing self-love is you might discover that there's less things to judge in the world. 
It's going to be a big one, I know. When you practice self-love, when you really start learning how to love yourself, your reactivity to things around you, your, your judgment about things around you tends to diminish because you start to see the world through a different lens. Not rose color, not rose color spectacles, by the way, not like some Pollyanna look. But what you will see in the world when you start to come from a self-loving place is you won't be hooked into things as easily. So you become, a, you become more able to witness what's going on versus react. You become more able to evaluate things than being judgmental. There's a little difference there. And when you have this practice of self-love in your daily practice, which is what I recommend, and again, I'll put a link in the comments at the back end for the course, you can check it out for yourself, is that you'll find yourself being able to see through a lens more clearly and see the world more holistically. So the craziness that you may be seeing out there, or I should say the craziness you may be labeling out there, once you start to make more strength, sense in a strange sort of way. So that's a powerful and a um, holistic play to see what's going on because you start from the place where you love yourself first. Let me see if there's any more. I know I'm in double digits now, so I've got quite a few out there. Let me see if there's anything else that comes up right away because these are, these are basically some of the things. There's so many more. I could, if I sat down for an hour or two, I could write down a whole list of even more than I put out on the, what's on, the, um, on the page for the product and also in this talk. But let me see if there's any more that's top of mind. Um, yes, there's always another one. So another possible side effect you might experience when you practice self-love and you start drawing into your life more positive experiences. Part of that is because you're vibrating, so to speak, at a frequency that is at a higher level, so that what we experience is at a higher level too, which also means that things that are not at that level will tend to dip past you by. You won't feel them, you won't, dis well, you won't explore them, you won't be pulled into them. But what happens is though, what happens around you starts to change. Because what's happening, here's another one, another, side, another possible side effect of it you experience when you practice self-love, said so many times now, is what's going to happen is you might start changing it. Well, you will start changing your reality. By changing your reality, by having different experiences, what you see in the world will shift. And the thing is, a lot of people, as I mentioned earlier, in one of the other principles or, or uh, side effects, is that you'll be less driven by external codependency experiences. What happens is you start seeing through a lens more clearly, as I mentioned. And so your reality will actually be shifting into reality because what you may have been living under before that point was a form of delusion because you were living in a codependent model that wasn't true. That was a long way of saying it. So the thing I'll leave you with, I think it seems the biggest one, is that you will start to find your reality changing to becoming more loving based, self-focused in the sense of positive direction and more aligned to where you want to go. Things that may have been impossible hurdles before, such so challenges you couldn't overcome, become molehills you can get through, meaning your reality has shifted. See, the thing is when you start to really support yourself in the self-love modality I'm talking about, then things out there that maybe have been impossible to um, achieve or hills you could, places you could not climb over that were just too big, start to come into perspective. You see through a reality where you see those things are actually very um, passable. You can get past them to where you want to go. So as simple as it is, the idea of self-love, as I mentioned, has many side effects that are actually very potent in your life. This is why I've been harping on this and talking about this for over a year now. Actually, I started talking about a year and a half ago, but I made it into a product about a year ago. So I'm starting to see reminders come up on Facebook from a year ago when I posted the, the first images from the cover to the um, product. So to let you know just a little bit about what it is before you go over there, so you can check it out for yourself, is my guided self-love meditation is actually a... It's two meditation, two gu audio guided meditations, an AM and a PM, like a start your day and end your day type thing, with a rather um, in-depth guidebook, which covers more of this, but actually goes into showing you both one level which is external and one level that's internal, but how self-love can change your life. I'm keeping it, I'm not saying everything right now because you have to go check it out for yourself. Yeah, that's about right, I'd like that. So the link will be in the comments and it can be verbally in case you don't see it in the comments, is it's barryselby.com forward slash self-love. That is my um, um, direct link to it. Self-love or one word, by the way. Um, I'll also put a link in the comments, a couple of links. I did mention my books, that's gonna be in the comments. I'll also put a link in the comments for a way to reach me if you wanna to talk to me about your own challenges in love and relationships, for the women particularly, that'll be in the comments as well. And um, if I come up with any more, I'll post them in the comments too. 
So that's given you a list of about a dozen different things you can benefit from as side effects from practicing self-love. That's why I'm inviting you to check out my offering on, that will be in the comments. Um, also, as a reminder, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, I do this every day. This is my daily Facebook Live. This is number 802, I think I said it was. Yeah, 802. I do this on my personal page on Facebook, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. The replays go to my business page on Facebook and also to YouTube, so I'll give you the place to find those. On Facebook, you can find my replays on my business page, which you can like, please, which is barryselby.author. And also on my YouTube channel, which you can please subscribe to, which is Barry Selby. The playlist on there is Messages from the Masculine. So there's a bunch of talks out there. I did a couple of talks last week about being ball busters. Slightly different topic. You might enjoy that one, ladies. Um, and I think that's about it for now. I will put links in the comments, all three, and check them out when I sign off. I appreciate being with me as always. I do invite you as always to take care of yourself. That's why my self-love practice is out there for you because it will help you take care of yourself better. So I'm encouraging you, inviting you. Um, emphatic, perhaps, about it. So I appreciate you loving yourself, taking care of yourself, being a better, positive person on the planet. That's my mission. That's what I hope yours is too. I thank you for being with me, with me as always. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Take care of yourself. I'll see you again soon. Bye.